Good morning, KU. I'm Avalon Cole. And I'm Rachel Buey. And last night was the lunar eclipse. Yes, I was. did not stay up late enough to watch it. Did you? I did. I accidentally took a three-hour nap, so I wasn't tired. That's perfect. But yeah, it was really cool because I used to want to be an astronaut when I was younger mm -hmm. for eight years. So it was wow. really interesting to me. And I took some pictures of it. And you know, you can see the moon is red, and then Mars is in the corner because it's the closest it's been since like 2008 or something like that. That's awesome. So, so what time did you actually have to stay up to watch it? Um, the last picture I got was around 2.40 in the morning. So oh my goodness. The peak time was, I think, around 3 a.m. But okay. it was really cool because you could see it go from the moon being bright literally as it was transitioning, the sliver just got smaller and smaller in the wow. five minutes that I was out there, so. That's great, and yeah. so you don't need a telescope or anything to see nope. it, you can just walk outside and nope, see it? Nope, it's right there, and I think tonight, as well as a little bit of a partial eclipse, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly, right. but we're supposed to actually have three more total lunar eclipses over the next two years. Oh wow, so. maybe I'll stay up late tonight and watch yeah. it then. It should be pretty cool. I just didn't know like what time to go outside. I guess yeah. I could have looked it up. I just had a lot of homework. Yeah, so. it's pretty late. So. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've been to the Air and Space Museum before in Washington, yeah. D.C., but that's as close as I've gotten to experiencing space. <laughs> I went to space camp when I was younger, so <laughs> that's I was so a great. Nerd, so. Yeah, I loved it. So, oh, that's yeah. fun. Yeah, and today is April fifteenth. Mm -hmm. It is unfortunately the one year anniversary of the Boston yes, bombing. Very sad. And we also want to give our condolences to everyone in the Overland Park shooting. Mm -hmm. That was horrible. It's just sad that so many of these horrible things happen in such good events and yeah. good places. I don't understand what drives people to do that, but it kind of makes you reevaluate everything. I know I had a right. friend who was in Boston and he was supposed to be at the race. And That's unbelievable. Wasn't. It just really puts things in perspective for you mm -hmm. that really sometimes does. like you could have been there or someone you knew. Yeah. I know they did, um, I read an article recently about the aftermath, about how the Boston victims that were hurt are doing now. Mm -hmm. And it's just really interesting to see, like a lot of them are doing good yeah. and really trying to get through that hard time. Yeah. So. Not letting that tragic event just completely yeah. alter their life. They're still fighting through, which is really admirable. I know, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, on a more local note, the parking prices are going up at KU, which is not good news either. No, <laughs> it's not at all. I know it doesn't affect you because you're a senior, right? Right, I'm graduating in May, so I don't have to worry about it, luckily, but you yeah. do. Yeah, I'm right. taking an extra semester, so I'm gonna be here okay. next year, and oh. I don't wanna pay for more parking. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, they're not sure exactly how much the prices are gonna go up yet. Right. It right. should be different for you know different kinds, so mm -hmm. um, I guess it's supposed to be a different tier for how much or how close you want to be to campus. So right. like the parking garage by the union is going to be more than okay. a parking lot that's farther away. That makes sense yeah. too. I don't know, parking and prices always go up. It's just horrible. Yeah. Parking around the union too is impossible. You constantly get tickets. I know, especially, you know, Ugh. during the day. But after, you know, five, it's okay. But I know. It's still I'm hard still to nervous. find something. Yeah. yeah, I'm just always looking for cops. Mm -hmm. Okay, well that's all we have for today and we'll be right back with our guest Ayup Ustin from the Dialogue Institute of the Southwest. And we're back with Ayup here. How are you doing today? Doing pretty good. Thank How are you for you? joining us. Thank you for letting me be here. <laughs> okay, so you're a part of the Dialogue Institute of the Southwest, correct? Yes, Dialogue Institute of the Southwest okay. is the organization I'm volunteering for. Tell me a little bit about the institution, the organization. Uh, Dialogue Institute of the Southwest is an organization that uh, aims to promote mutual understanding, uh, mutual respect and cooperation among people of different faiths, cultures, traditions, uh, which was established in 2002, uh, mainly by Turkish Americans in Houston and inspired by a Turkish Muslim scholar, Fethullah Gülen, and we have um, a lot of uh, branches in mainly Southwest and Midwest states with the same name, but also we are a nationwide organization. Wow, that's really interesting. Yeah. That's great. Do you know when it started? Say it again? Do you know when the organization started? Oh yeah, it, uh, it started in 2002. Okay. Yeah, in Houston, Texas. Interesting. Okay, so you have an event coming up 
April 29th, correct? Yes. Tell me a little bit about that event. What's going to happen there? Sure. Uh, we are having our sixth annual Dialogue on Friendship Dinner here at Kansas Union Ballroom. Uh, and we are having a keynote speaker from Chicago. You can yes, see there we go. from Chicago at Catholic Theological Union. Uh, but this is more than that. We are also having a uh, world-renowned uh, calligraphist from Turkey, Aydin Shire, and also a whirling dervish, oh. uh, an American lady. Plus, we will have uh, poetry by the Kansas Poet Laureate 2009 through 13. And uh, we, at this dinner, we will give some awards to some people in our community, some deans, some, you know, uh, state reps will receive awards, and also a few people who does public service, you know, work. Awesome, that's great. So you have different events you were talking about there. Um, I think oh. I heard you say the whirling dance. Yes. Right. What, what's that? Tell me about Whirling that. dervish dance is a spiritual dance actually. Uh, that started, I would say, probably uh, 13th century. Mm -hmm. uh, and the pioneer of this movement uh, is called Rumi who is also famous in America. Mm -hmm. And their idea was to accept everybody. And mm -hmm. their dance, even when he died, Rumi died, uh, Jews thought he was a Jewish, Christians thought he was a Christian, and Muslims thought he was a Muslim. And their dance, I can show <laughs> a little bit uh, okay. about Mu. Okay. So your right hand side is, your right hand is looking up and your left hand is looking down right. and that means you twirl around you turn you twirl around, around. <laughs> yeah hmm. and that means we are receiving from god and giving it back to people everybody in the uh, in the world right so that's what the spinning yeah, means. you're giving it spinning. back yes that's what we and we will have all of these all of these three uh, at the dinner during wow. during the dinner okay so it just kind of goes in a sequence of events yes say for example our event will start at 6 p.m. and then 6:30 we will have a welcoming speech with uh, poetry, mm -hmm. and then uh, around 7.30, we will have a whirling dervish dance, and uh, at the end of the event, we will have calligraphy by oh. the world-renowned uh, calligraphist, and everybody who attends the event will also have a, a gift, personalized yes. gift for them. Oh, that's so great. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming and telling us about your event. It thank sounds you. like it's gonna be a wonderful time. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll be right back with our next guest. And welcome back. We're here with Bria Cundy today from Hi. U at the U. Welcome. Thank you for having me here today. Let us know what's uh, going on in the union this week. Well, this week, since it's Tasty Tuesday, we are having 50 cents off at the Pulse. And I believe the U at the U desk will have some sort of sample and coupons for that for today. Are there any movies showing throughout the week? Actually, yes, there are. SUA is hosting um, Silver Linings Playbook tonight from 7 to 9 in Alderson Auditorium. Have you seen that movie? I have not. You have not. No. I saw it. it. It was pretty good. I've so, heard good things about yeah, it. Yeah, so you should ch definitely come out and check that out tonight. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, now, the Kansas Relays are this weekend. Yes, they is are. there anything going on in regards to those? We aren't actually having anything going on here at the Union, but we are having down at the bookstore. It's 40% off um, select jackets and sweatshirts from the UDK Clip and Save coupon. So if you're going out, you might as well go get your KU gear and represent at Rock Talk Park this weekend. Right, all right. So we got a couple deals and a good movie to check yes. out. So sounds like a good week in the Union. So thank you for yes. joining us today. Yeah, thank you for having me. All right, and we'll be right back. What do you mean? What do you mean my mocha's not here? I'm Ben Allen, seriously. Where? Where? What about here? Is that better? Oh, I'm, now my arm's disappearing. Obviously, this is even worse. Oh, I look on. good. I look real good. Make sure you tune in on Wednesdays at 3 p.m. to listen to me and a bunch of other sports guys tell you what you've missed and give you a little bit of an inside perspective on some of the athletes and basically what we're thinking. Make sure you tweet at us at 3 in key on Twitter. I don't know where else you would tweet at us, but you should do that because um, I'm lonely and I need friends. Please follow me.
Ben Allen Sports, it'll make your day better. Probably not, it'll make mine better though. Hi, I'm Kimberly Massinio. And I'm Brianna Johnson. This is today's Good Morning KU News Update. Frazier Glenn Cross, the 73-year-old man suspected of fatally shooting three people at two Jewish-affiliated facilities, faces charges of premeditated murder and could be formally charged with hate crimes today. Cross was the former leader and founder of the Carolina Knights of the Ku Klux Klan and the White Patriot Party of the 1980s. Under federal law, the hate crime charge could put the death penalty on the table. Students don't need to be concerned, but a case of tuberculosis was confirmed on campus this week. An email from the Vice Provost notified staff and students on Monday that fewer than 50 individuals have been exposed and that they had all been contacted. Only those who spent time in a confined space with an infected person are at risk. The L student is expected to make a full recovery. The election for next year's student senate is still on hold. Results have been suspended until the University Judicial Board meets this week. The board will either uphold the decision to disqualify the Jayhawkers Coalition or to overturn it and release the election results. A third possibility is that the board will call for another hearing, which might take several weeks, so stay tuned. The search for missing Malaysian Flight 370 has hit yet another snag. The robot submarine sent to the Indian Ocean has aborted its mission because the water is too deep. The U.S.-made submarine has a depth of 15,000 feet. Today only, Google is selling Google Glass to anyone who wants to pay $1,500 plus tax. The goal of the one-day sale is to find a balance between expensiveness and exclusivity. Anyone purchasing Google Glass today will also get a sunglasses shade or one of Google's newly introduced prescription glasses frames. The final Chevrolet Corvette has been lifted out of the sinkhole that appeared suddenly mid-February under the National Corvette Museum in Bowling Green, Kentucky. The 2001 Corvette Z06 that was recovered was in the worst shape compared to the seven before it. While the other Corvettes suffered from dented body panels to twisted suspensions and everything in between, all that was left for the final Corvette was a destroyed frame. This just shows how powerful Mother Nature can be. We're going to take a short break and we'll be back with Rachel and Johanna for the weather update. How's it looking today? Um, it's nice out. It's sunny. There's um, but it's looking warm today a little bit. I think. You think? So, is the rest yeah, of the week supposed to be warmer? Um, by the end of the week, it should be okay. Um, it's supposed to rain on Thursday, I believe, but it should be in the seventies. All right. So no more snow. Okay, we're having a little bit of technical difficulties, so we're just going to wrap it up. Thank you for joining us today, and goodbye.